Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Mandy. So if you saw the last bloom video, this is um, how it dried. It Where I put it on my table must not have been um, quite level because if you can see in the center, it wobbled. Now I did have quite a bit of cell activator in the middle. And this is kind of what I was saying about it kind of does this river thing if you leave too much. I think it'll still be beautiful resined. Um, I tr I'm trying to look at the whole picture, um, but it definitely, like some of my favorite parts are still intact, um, but this was one of my favorite parts and it's mostly still intact, but there's some, some ickiness. So anyway, I just wanted to share it with you guys. I don't always get to show you the dried results, but this is a dried result. Should I keep it, resin it? Think it's still worth it? Let me know. Anyway, we're gonna try to do another bloom. I don't know the colors yet, oh, so let me get them. But I wanted to share that with you guys because I was getting some resin drips off of a painting. So while I was doing that, I figured I'll show you the dry result. So here. Okay, so this is a 10, 10 inch MDF round um, and I'm kind of using up some old paint. This is Tiger Lily. This is one of the paints that uh, I rescued. This is Dreamsicle. Uh, these are both from Color Art. That is, I, don't, I think it's called Magic Slippers. It's a fairly new primary element. It's Pearlescent Teal Boom Gel. That is Medium Violet, which is a color that has been mixed up a really long time, so I rescued it. and. This is, I think that's Mars Violet. I don't know if I end up using that or not. We'll see, I forgot. Maybe I do. And that is Turquoise Thalo, I think. Or, yeah. So, I'm putting down the Dreamsicle first. It's still pretty thick. Now, Dreamsicle is not as old as some of these other ones, but I still had to thin it down. And so this is what I'm trying to do is take out a few that I need to use that are older, thin them down, let them set because they're going to have 8,000 million bubbles, and then continually use them in things until I use them. And I'm trying not to mix up new colors, even though I'm like, oh, I really liked this one color. I'm like, nope, use, <laughs> use up your colors. And then I love that tiger lily color. And um, one of my favorite soft yellows from color art is buttercup because it has kind of a pearl white in it and so it's it looks great um it looks great in everything uh, you, you don't realize it will until until you put the thing under resin and then you're just like oh wow so anyway i'm tempted to mix that up but i'm like no i'm first going to use up these other colors um so when i was getting these colors i just kind of pulled you know a couple of colors and and uh, I think I'm gonna use blue black too and I don't think I showed you that and then I was like I haven't used boom gel in a while so I just grabbed one so this is this was pure randomness like I didn't really have a plan I just grabbed colors and you know that's kind of why I keep MDF around because I don't always want to be committed to um, something on like a cradled wood board or something you know what if I am not that, that big of a fan so so that was the magic slippers and then this is the what did I tell you this was I just had a moment oh no that's not medium violet that's not true that is that's not medium violet that is um Deep Violet from Color Art. It's a vivid, intense fluid acrylic, so that's not an old paint. I did, I did thin down Medium Violet, and it was an old paint, and I use it in an upcoming pour, but I didn't use it there. And that's Mars Violet from Color Art. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. It is a fluid acrylic as well. So don't forget, you can save twenty percent off of anything from Color Art using Mandy one one two zero. Um, if you follow my channel, you know I'm a big color art junkie. I do um, really love these fluid acrylics. 
Like I really, really love them. So um, if you use them in blooms or you use them in your own pores, they are really amazing and really good quality. So now we're going to put the pearlescent teal on. Now here's just a word of caution when you put pearlescent, when you put boom gel close to the top of a piece. There's something about boom gel that interacts with your cell activator that can be very positive, but if you put too much, it will it will continue to react and it can actually eat up your cell activator. So if you're going to put it near the top, be sparing with it. I get my boom gels from Pixel Paint Designs, which is also where I get my Australian Fotrol. And there is a 10% um, discount code using MANDY10 in all caps. Um, she ships from the United States, great prices. Um, so, but just, just a heads up, there's just something about them. They react so well with cells and all that, but um, they can eat up your cell activator. So that's one of the reasons why I'm drizzling some blue black on top of it. Um, and I'm trying to kind of create a little bit of a barrier, but I definitely used too much. I should have just drizzled it. Um, um, but it still turns out really pretty, but that's just, you know, a heads up for you guys. But the other thing that's cool about it is if you use it right underneath the cell activator, it kind of breaks up with your cell activator and creates some really cool lacing. Um, I have some coasters I did a while back um, where I used the same pearlescent teal and it just created this lovely shimmer. I should, I should redo some of those. Um, they were really, really beautiful. All right, so white cell activator. We're using M. Graham titanium white paint. You can use Amsterdam. I just really like M. Graham and I get it at Flick with Australian Floetrol at roughly a three to one ratio. So roughly three parts Aussie Floetrol to one part paint. Um, you, you know, measurements are a guide, but you really want to look for consistency. And I'm about to put my big old head right in the way. <clears throat> so when you're blowing in the center, for those of you who are still practicing, which I consider myself still practicing because I've been doing blooms a long time and I still have rough days. Um, you kind of want to get the center of your cell activator with your breath, and then you want to pull your head either back or tilt it to the side so you can broaden the reach of your breath and basically enlarge it. One of the things I realize that I do like subconsciously is I think I like purse my lips too much when I'm blowing and I like create narrow breath. Um, so you know, there's a lot that goes on in the blowing of things. It, it is, it's more challenging than most people realize until they start doing it. Some people just get it and, but I am not, I've done blooms for years already and I still have days where I'm like, what is the problem? Um, but if you watch Shelly, she will kind of enlarge her circle and she'll pull her head back as she blows and she blows like these perfect little petals. Um, Lisa Marvin does a great job. She tilts her head to the side. If I try to tilt my head to the side, I don't know. It just doesn't work for me. Maybe I need to practice it more. Um, works great for her. But every time I do it, I think I overthink it and I narrow my breath and whatever. So, but that's the idea. So looks great initially. Um, I have some, you know, narrow petals but like I said that's because I tend to like I, don't, I think I keep my lips too narrow I, I need to start thinking about that when I'm blowing them out but the colors are really beautiful together and um, I think this will look really pretty under resin the the boom gel does kind of continue to react with my cell activator so when I saw the dry result I was like yeah I probably should have used a little bit less of that but the colors together are great so I'm just getting some bubbles and then we'll spin it out but this was a fun one I need to use my boom gels more often I really enjoy them in swipes and in blooms 
with bloom gels in case you're not familiar for blooms you can just squeeze them right out of the bottle they're an acrylic paint but they have like the perfect consistency they don't need the to be mixed into anything um people have asked me if that applies to unicorn spit i've never used unicorn spit um i've heard that it does not work the same but i can't answer that All right, unfortunately, even though I um, thinned out those paints a day or so prior, I, I did have some bubbles in some of the paint and in my pillow paint. So I know that's boring, but we got to pop them. I love these colors together. They're so pretty. And at this point, I'm probably pretty happy that I used a little too much pillow paint because I can get some of those weird petals to the edge that you know weren't blown out that well anyway I hope everyone is doing well um, I'm very happy that it is summer even though it's going to be hot it was a pretty intense couple of months. Uh, so I, what I did is I shifted the board a little bit um, because for some reason my, my spinner seems like it's not level because it seems to either I'm just unconscious of it when I'm doing it or it's it seems to shift my design to one side so what I did is I moved the I moved the board to the opposite side to try to shift some of that paint naturally um, to the side that's not getting as much coverage and it, it does it does help uh, I would prefer doing that over tilting a, a design because when you tilt it a lot of times your cells get wonky and that's a bummer so anyway um, I'm happy to see that it's working and at this point I'm trying to make sure that I I get it to the edge but I I don't want to overstretch it and make it disastrous either so what I'm doing there with my big head in the way is trying to see if I can blow some of it to the edge and kind of help it, um, you know, we do what we can. I, I don't really want to buy another spinner because it works fine, but I, there is definitely something that seems to make it more wobbly on one side than the other. Um, I feel like I'm having to correct that more than I used to. Uh, and I tend to obsess over those little blocks of color, but then when I look at them now from, from the view that you're seeing, I'm like, it really wasn't a big deal. Just leave it there and go on with your life, you know, but that's what we do. We, we tend to obsess over our art when we're working on it don't we and to be honest 10 inches um is still pretty big for me like for me to blow them out myself i've been practicing blowing out blooms myself for the last several months as opposed to using like a hair dryer or something and to get a decent bloom at eight or ten inches when you are practicing is is tough so Normally, I would have used a hair dryer for anything bigger than eight inches. So we're going to call it a win because we're learning. So here's our close up. All right. So beautiful, beautiful shimmer. Um, I love the way the yellow and the dream sickle, the tiger lily and the dream sickle look in the background. You can see a little bit of wobbly in the cells, um, but I still think it's beautiful. 
the places where that boom gel is a little bit more prominent can actually break up that lacing as it continues to move. So um, I am pleased that it dried okay, but that's kind of the, the caution is less is more. But I think this is going to be really beautiful resin and you'll have to let me know what you think. I do try to show you guys the resin results um, after I finally do it. Thanks for watching. Bye.